Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Dennis Lebedev has delivered. He got a second round knockout earlier today of Sean Cox, who going into the fight only had one loss. For guys who like power lefties and who admire guys who can set things up, this fight is definitely worth watching. I have it posted right now on my channel page. You could literally watch the fight in under seven minutes. Let's talk about the keys to this fight. You know, Sean Cox has a huge left hand. It's huge. If you're an opponent of him, there's one part of your body that you need to worry about. Unfortunately for Cox, if you ask the question, where can he deliver his power? Right? It's only to, in my opinion, one part of his opponent's anatomy. And that part is the right side of the opponent's head. Right? John Cox, who calls himself the sniper, is a head hunter. He doesn't throw a lot to the body. He's not an inside fighter. He's not going to body you. He's not even going to come inside and be a mid-range hooker. He doesn't throw to the body. What he does is he literally uses his legs for defense. He's athletic for a big guy. He typically fights at heavyweight and he likes to stay outside and then drop a quick, and I mean quick, overhand left, his power punch. A vast virus database has been updated. Literally to the right side of his opponent's head. So when you watch this fight, you're going to see Sean Cox throw several overhand lefts in the first round, right? All of them intended for this side of Dennis Lebedev's head. When I call a fighter limited, when I lament the fact that the guy is too left-hand centric and that he doesn't do a lot of other things. Just remember this fight involving Sean Cox, right? It's clear that Cox is throwing that left hand with knockout intentions, right? He has a plan A. It's to knock out Dennis Lebedev early. I mean, literally from the opening bell. He knocked out Wayne Brathwaite in the first round. It's clear that's his plan. I don't think he had a plan B. Now, Dennis Lebedev, who himself has a very heavy left hand, is a more complete boxer. And what you're going to notice is Lebedev, like me, has a short neck, right? And he is prepared to raise his hand, right? His right hand to cover right? The right side of his head. What he also does too is he realizes that the sniper can only operate from long range, right? As I said before, Cox doesn't have much of an inside game. So what Lebedev starts to do, he's just looking at Cox focused on Cox's left hand. What he starts to do in addition to block the punch, he's prepared from the opening bell to block the punch. In addition to blocking the punch, he is he starts to time it and lean under it. That's the fight. Once he neutralizes Cox's left hand, Lebedev, who has more going on than Cox, who himself wants to land his own left, in fact, he ends the fight with the left hand, right, is able to maneuver his way eventually inside he's the only guy throwing body punches in this fight right he's trying to set up his own left but unlike cox who just stays outside and then comes in with power lefts 
Lebedev actually is throwing jabs to the body, is trying to set up feints, is doing things to hide his intentions, right? Now you have many guys in boxing who do one thing spectacularly well. In Cox's case, it's throw that overhand left. Here's the problem. At the highest levels of the game, guys will actually look at film of you and will plan on negating your top weapon. And if you don't have a plan B, then all you are is a future knockout victim. All you are is a guy in front of them who if they time you and take away the one part of their body that you're targeting, they know that eventually they're going to catch up to you. And this fight's remarkable because neither guy backs up that much in the fight. Cox is just trying to stay outside to land that left hand. And of course, once Lebedev has it blocked, then this fight is pretty much over. Let's talk about what would have made Cox a better fighter. For one, if he had a right hand, right? Understand Canelo, it, who is orthodox, has a pretty good right hand, right? He can pulverize you with his overhand right. Pretty dramatic puncher, but he also has a great left hook, his non-dominant hand, up front. In fact, that left hook is one of boxing's best punches. So if you're fighting Canelo, you can't just dodge his big overhand right. You have to dodge the big overhand right, and you also have to think about that left hook. Right? Vladimir Klitschko, same type thing. Take a look at the left hook that he knocks out Eddie Chambers with from across the ring. Right? As great, look at the left hook that he knocks out Ray Austin with. As good as Vladimir Klitschko's overhand right is, and it puts guys to sleep. Right? As good as his overhand right is, he has another punch. He has a plan B. He has that left hook. Floyd Mayweather, right, can knock you out. I believe he knocked out Ricky Hatton with what he called a check left hook, right? Floyd's a right-handed fighter. He has a great straight right, but he also has that left hook out there, right? Now, the difference between these elite fighters and someone like Sean Cox, and don't get me wrong, Sean Cox... If he lands that left on anybody, it's lights out. I don't care who the person is. But the difference between the elite fighters and a good fighter like Sean Cox, right? The difference between excellent and good is just that Sean Cox has one spectacular skill, right? It's his overhand left. He doesn't have something else to frame it. He can't frame his power. Let me just say too that when you get to the higher levels of the game, right, guys have different punches that they throw. Dennis Lebedev at one point gets inside here and tries to drop a great uppercut. It misses. But the point is Lebedev, like Carl Froch, can throw a great uppercut. Right, So while you're trying to figure out how to block their power punches, and Frotch, by the way, has a great left hook to go with a great straight right. He can hit you with an uppercut from way out. You can't focus on taking away his primary weapon. Right, There are too many weapons to take away. Well, Sean Cox had one primary weapon. A great straight left. And once that got taken away, he was a sitting duck by the second round. Right? This was a guy who has a huge knockout ratio. I'm sure in the fights 
on which there aren't any films. In other words, most of Sean Cox's fights, I'm sure what happened in those fights was that his opponents came in the ring not realizing that Sean Cox has an A-plus straight right hand and probably because of the southpaw stance, literally just walked right into it, right? At the highest levels, you need more than that. Let me also point out, too, offense is only part of the game. As you watch Dennis Lebedev, understand that Lebedev, who himself is a big puncher, has some defensive skills. I want you to just count the number of times in the first round that Lebedev literally ducks under Sean Cox's big left hand. Also, just one other thing to make a note of, you know, um, sometimes in boxing, a lack of height helps. Lebedev was the shorter man in this fight. That actually enabled him to duck under Sean Cox's primary weapon, right? Unlike other sports, let's say unlike basketball, here in boxing, sometimes being the shorter man is actually a bonus if you know how to use that lack of height to your benefit. It's clear in this fight that Benis Lebedev does just that. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. I have this Lebedev Cox fight up right now on my YouTube channel page. I'm YouTube user DWYER70905. Thanks for watching.